Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be discussing about the hormones which are going to be produced by the gonads. So what are gonads? Gonads are nothing but the reproductive glands. So for females, their reproductive glands are going to be the ovaries. And for males, their reproductive gland is going to be the testis. So in this video, we are going to be discussing what are the hormones which are going to be produced by the ovary as well as the testis. So firstly, let's see what are the hormones which are produced by the testis. Okay. So testis is oval in shape. Okay. And it is a very important primary sex organ of the male. Okay. And inside the testis, there are lot of tubes. Okay, inside the testis there are lot of tubes and these tubes which are present inside the testis are called seminiferous tubules. So when we take a look at the seminiferous tubules, seminiferous tubules are going to have cells. There are a lot of cells, there are three types of cells which are there inside the seminiferous tubule and one cell one type of cell which is present in the seminiferous tubule are called as the Leydig cells. Okay. So, uh, there are different types of cells which are there inside. Right now, we are not going to discuss about that. So, we are just going to see the Leydig cells right now. So, this Leydig cell is present inside the seminiferous tubule. So, the seminiferous tubule, where is it? It is inside the testis. So now what is the function of the Leydig cell? The Leydig cells are the endocrine part. It is the endocrine part of the testis. And the Leydig cells are going to be producing the hormone testosterone. Okay. So the Leydig cells will produce the hormone testosterone. So this testosterone hormone is very important for the Beginning of spermatogenesis. So what is spermatogenesis? Spermatogenesis is the formation of sperms. So for the formation of sperms, testosterone is important. Only if testosterone is there, the formation of sperms will take place. Okay. And then the next function of testosterone is that it is important for the development of secondary sexual characters of males. Secondary sexual characters. So, what are the secondary sexual characters which are seen in male? They have a deep voice and uh, the development of facial hair. That is the beard and the moustache. And then uh, broad shoulders. Okay, so all these are the secondary sexual characters of male. And for the development of all these secondary sexual characters, testosterone hormone is needed. Okay. So, how is this testosterone hormone produced? It is produced by the Leydig cells, which is the endocrine part of the testis. So, now let's move on to discuss about the hormones which are produced by the ovaries. So let's see what are the hormones which are produced by the ovaries. Okay. So this is an ovary. This is how ovary will be there. And inside the ovary all the follicles will develop. So we are not going to be talking about that. Okay. So now let's understand what are the hormones which are produced by the ovaries. So the ovary produces two hormones. One is estrogen and the other one is progesterone okay so this is the ovary means inside the ovaries the follicles will develop okay so one follicle is called as the graphene follicle okay one follicle is known as the graphene follicle so this graphene follicle is actually a mature follicle which has the ovum in it. So inside the graphene follicle only ovum is going to be there. 
So what is this ovum? Ovum is the female gamete. So this graphene follicle is going to be the mature follicle and it has the ovum. And this graphene follicle is only responsible for the production of estrogen. So estrogen is going to be getting produced with the help of graphene follicle. Okay, so I will draw the structure of graphene follicle for you. Okay, so the ovum is going to be here. So this is the ovum. Okay, and then this is the graphene, this entire thing is the graphene follicle. Okay, so this is the graphene follicle and inside the graphene follicle what is there? Ovum is there. Okay, and then at one point of time this ovum will be released out and I, I remember one thing, graphene follicle is only going to produce the hormone estrogen. Okay, and then the ovum will be released out. So see here. This follicle, this graphene follicle will rupture and it will release the ovum out. It will release the ovum out. Okay. Now in this graphene follicle, the ovum is not there. So what is going to happen to this graphene follicle? So the graphene follicle after releasing the ovum, it is just the covering. It is just going to be there. So this covering, okay, will later on shred. Oh, sorry, will later on shrink. This graphene follicle after the ovum is released out, it will shrink in order to form what is called as the corpus, corpus luteum. So corpus luteum is nothing but the remains of the graphene follicle. So this corpus luteum, why are we talking about this now? So this corpus luteum is only going to be producing the hormone progesterone. Okay. So, the graphene follicle is responsible for producing the estrogen and the corpus luteum which is the remains of the graphene follicle is responsible for producing the hormone progesterone. So, now let's see what is the role of, what is the function of estrogen and progesterone. So, first let's start with estrogen. So, estrogen is important for the development of secondary sexual characters in female. Okay. It's important for development of sexual, secondary sexual characters of female. So what are the secondary sexual characters of female? Females have a high pitched voice. And then uh, they will have a wider hip development of breast. Okay. So all these are secondary sexual characters of a female. So this hormone, estrogen, is important for the development of all these characters in a woman. Okay, and then the next function is, this hormone is important for oogenesis. Oogenesis means for the formation of the ovum. This hormone is again important. Okay, so this is the function of estrogen. Moving on to progesterone. So, from where is progesterone getting produced? Progesterone is getting produced from the remains of the graphene follicle and that remains of the graphene follicle is known as the corpus luteum. So, progesterone is very much needed. It's a very, very important hormone. When I tell you why, then you will understand. So, progesterone is a hormone which is needed for implantation. So, what is implantation? What is implantation? Now, after fertilization, the developing baby, the developing embryo has to go and attach itself onto the uterus. So, uterus is where the development of the baby takes place, right? So, for that baby to go and attach, okay, so we don't call it as a baby, we call it as an embryo, okay? So, for the embryo, for the embryo to go and attach itself onto the uterus, progesterone hormone is needed 
and that process by which embryo gets attached to the uterus is only known as implantation. So implantation is nothing but the process by which the embryo goes and attach itself onto the uterus of the mother. And for that progesterone hormone is very very important. Only when progesterone hormone is there, implantation can take place. Any time during pregnancy, if progesterone hormone is not there, it will, not, it will lead to abortion of the child. Okay, so it will lead to abortion any time during the pregnancy, during the entire course of pregnancy. Any time if the progesterone level hormone, if the level of progesterone goes down, it will lead to abortion. Okay, so or miscarriage. Okay, it will lead to miscarriage. So that is about progesterone and uh, the next function is progesterone is important throughout the pregnancy. It is important to maintain the entire pregnancy. Once the child is born, then the progesterone level will go down. So, there is no problem in that. But to maintain the entire pregnancy, progesterone hormone is needed. Okay. So, these are the hormones and the functions of the hormones which are produced by the gonads. So, I hope you understood the concept that we have discussed in our today's lecture. Thank you.